Hey, I'm Del Shanzi, and we are back with page five of the 304 reasons you should only buy a flat top or fly a flat top and nothing else. Right? Super Troy, you got it. What do you got? A limited rivet with stainless nail for maximum strength and minimum weight. Minimum weight. Aluminum. And not a limited. <laughs> I said well, aluminum. <laughs> Alumin uh, aluminum. Aluminum. No, 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 no. Okay. So, the, you have a stainless rivet, very, very strong. So the way I selected the rivets is I had a whole bunch of rivets to choose from. And my requirement was I tied one Kevlar line around the rivet, held my whole body weight on it. And if the rivet broke, it was a fail. And if the line broke, it was a fail. So literally, I know that each one of those points is able to hold my entire body weight for maximum strength. Plus, the way you do it is a lot simpler. Also, the, uh, it holds the lines in place. So even if you did cut a line, it's not going to automatically just unravel everywhere. Where typically, if they run them through holes, there's nothing really holding it. So if you were to cut a line, it would completely unravel because there's nothing holding it together. So you got a rivet that's holding it together. Um, tight fitting Delrin cage lugs maximize buoyancy in case or buoyancy in case of a water landing. So that was another reason that the flat top can float when other units sink immediately is like these, all the holes are external and showing so they could fill immediately with water. Where with the flat top, any holes drilled are then covered with the rivet. Also, we made sure that these Delrin connections are very tight so that the, the air inside of the aluminum tubes and its bigger, larger diameter tubing, so it will stay buoyant. Like, remember when I went in the water and the flat top was floating right next to me? Yeah. Buoyant, you just don't want it to sink immediately, which just happens with so many other units. So. Then you got all joint machine for perfect fit of weld and maximum strength and consistency. Uh, again, we're talking about the welds. A lot of the units, they'll just take like a flat round tube and stick it up against the round. So you got a flat against the round and they just fill the holes in with weld and just kind of put it in there, which isn't near as strong and it adds quite a bit of weight. With the flat top, each joint is machined specifically to that radius and angle, and it's held in a really high-end, precise jig that holds it perfectly into place. So when it's welded, it's welded perfectly, so you're using minimum weld. Makes it lighter, makes it a heck of a lot stronger, and your unit just lasts a lot longer, as well as it is uh, heat treated after it's welding. Smaller bottom cage pieces to maximize strength where needed the most. Did you know that? The bottom cage pieces on the flat top are smaller than the top. So where do you need the most strength in a paramotor? At the bottom, because when you butt land, which is going to happen, you're going to land on your butt, and that's where the crumple zone is, and that's Bingo is on the bottom. So the smaller the cage piece, the stronger the cage piece. So we made this, the bottom cage pieces, which would take most of the brunt of an impact, we made them a bit smaller than the tops. For one, you can't mess up where the cage piece actually goes, so you can't put the cage piece in the wrong spot. But for two, smaller cage piece is a stronger cage piece. Uh, here we go. Hoop starts only four inches behind the pilot to keep weight and roll cage close to pilot. We went through, let's see, that one. So the fresh breeze is an entire arm length between the back of the harness and the back of the cage. The flat top is this <laughs> from here to here. So the flat top, the frame and cage, there's only four inches. So the, the first hoop starts only four inches behind the frame because it's critical to keep that roll cage as close to your body as possible. So by having the roll cage a full arm length uh, behind the actual frame, it makes it a lot more difficult for that cage to protect you in any way. So it's very important. It's also really nice to be able to have that weight closer to your center of gravity because the tighter that weight is into your body, the more 
you know, fluid you feel flying in turbulence, where with the weight hanging way off of your back, you're getting more slammed around and getting more swing and inertia if you get in turbulence. So this is a lot less likely to twist up and get spun up in your risers if you're flying in super heavy turbulence. So very, very valuable. Uh, riveted netting won't unstring if cut, which I talked about. So if you cut one line, that rivet will hold it here, the rivet will hold it here, so it's not gonna just completely unstring, and you could tie it off and glue it. The, with these types of units, most of them are like that on the unit, where if you, if you cut one line, the whole thing would come undone, because if that went in the prop during flight, that would be catastrophic. Also, of course, the Kevlar is a lot more resistant because it's 400 pound strength Kevlar line where this is just string. You could really break that very easily. Uh, riveted netting. Riveted netting is easy to replace and repair. So with the flat top, if you ever did cut the line, you're certainly not gonna break the line, uh, but if you were to ever cut or damage the line, it's easy enough to get a new piece of Kevlar. We sell a little uh, roll of the Kevlar with rivets and you could just re-rivet it to the cage. Imagine trying to replace the line on a fresh breeze. You would literally have to try and restring it through all those little holes. And having tried to do that before, it is a royal pain in the butt to try and restring that. So major pain, because that takes a little bit more than a needle and thread. Can you imagine trying to thread that string down that hole and have it then come out here? Uh, yeah. <laughs> have fun with that. <laughs> okay. Kevlar line does not stretch into the prop. Of course, we talked about that. Boom, this will stretch really easy. So you don't have any flex in Kevlar. Yes, you can do it effortlessly. Kevlar line is heat resistant to 900 degrees. So that's another one. If you get any heat or anything, or this happens to get on the muffler or anything like that, it could melt and actually break a nylon line. So the Kevlar, I mean, you literally can put a Bic lighter to it and you're not gonna damage the Kevlar because uh, it will hold up to that. Um, everybody easy to repair. Your river hold 200 pounds without cutting Kevlar. Rivet holds, we did. Yeah. Rivet netting won't string. Nanny is easy to replace and repair. That's what we went over. Each rivet holds way over 200 pounds without cutting Kevlar. So, oh yeah, that's another one uh, that we didn't actually hit because when they cut a hole or drill a hole, there's no way to shave or really smooth that hole completely because you can have sharp burrs on the inside. So any real loading on the string and this hole will actually cut the line which is another really cool idea about using rivets to hold the line on. You can put huge pressure on it, but the rivet is smooth, so there's no cutting surface that's gonna slice your Kevlar when you stand on it. So big, big difference from this. I actually tried that, and I took all the time to try and drill the holes and then string the line through it, and then when I tested it, it because my requirement was I needed to be able to literally stand on it without it breaking. But when I strung it through holes in the cage, it just sliced the Kevlar line and boom, you go right through it. So of course the nylon string is going to be even more likely to go through it. So Kevlar line does not stretch into the prop. Yes, of course the Kevlar line will not stretch into the prop and a big good chunk of that is the strength of the cage as well. It doesn't really do any good putting a super strong line on a really flimsy cage. It'll help a little bit, but the cage is so flimsy, you can literally flex the cage into the prop. So they utterly self-destruct if you trip and fall down, because you'll literally bend the cage into it. Careful, the, you, know, you don't want to destroy it. Okay, Kevlar line is heat resistant to 900 degrees. Kevlar line is UV protected. Uh, that's also cool, the black, the black coating on the Kevlar is a UV protectant. That just makes it last a lot longer. So even if you're leaving it out in the sun, just unprotected Kevlar would, uh, it would be half its strength in a matter of time if left out in the sun. But with the UV protectant, the black color on it, and it looks cool because it kind of matches the flat top. 
Kevlar line holds 425 pounds each. Yeah, 400 pound line, 425 pounds each line. Kevlar line tied and glued for maximum security. So the Kevlar, uh, when we tie off the ends, we don't just tie it, we actually super glue the ends so that that knot, it's impossible for that knot to come undone. So when you do tie it off, it absolutely is not gonna come unstrung. And uh, that is a little trickier time to tie off the nylon when it's going through those little holes. So that is another cool. So that is page five of the 304 reasons why the flat top is the only paramotor you should be flying.